Hello everyone, welcome back to PTech Chemistry Channel. My name is Dr. On. In this tutorial video, we'll go through this AS air level Cambridge International uh, Chemistry uh, for the for the May June 2023. This is the one hour 15 minutes paper two uh, variant one. In this first question, terylium is an element in group 16. That means you have got six outer shell electrons or six valence electrons. And uh, being in group 16, uh, that didn't tell us about the period number. But looking at the electronic configuration, we can see that it fills up to, you know, period number five. It fill up to the fifth shell and the shell which you fill up to, the number of fully filled shell, not fully filled, but the number of shells in which you fill up to, that is called your period number, the fifth row in the periodic table. So this most common isotope of terylium is 130 and if you look at the periodic table, uh, you should be able to find the proton number of terylium in group 16 and that is proton number of 52. This is what they call it the atomic number. The atomic number is also known as proton number, something from IGCSE and all level chemistry. It tells you the number of protons in the nucleus of an atom. On the other hand, you have this 130, that is what you call the mass or the nucleon number because there are all the particles in the nucleus of an atom because the particles in the nucleus of an atom consist of the protons and the neutrons and they are the heavy one so they are the heavy particles compared to the electrons which are found in the outer shells of the nucleus uh, of the atom they are found in the shells which are surrounding the nucleus rather than inside the nucleus so the number of electrons there because this is what we are called atom there is no charge so that means the number of electrons equal to the number of protons if i just fill in the number of protons there there should be 52 uh, shown at the bottom left as part of the international standard in this kind of notation so there should be 52 because atom is uncharged atom is uncharged so the number of protons equal to the number of electrons the nuclear number there will be 130 as that is the mass number consisting of the number of protons and the number of neutrons in the nucleus of an atom then the number of neutrons will be 130 minus 52 just pressing down the calculator and i get 78 neutrons there in part b identify the subshell the the mean there's only one answer there this is in an atom of te with the lowest energy very specific lowest energy we fill the lowest energy uh orbital first before higher energy so we have to go all the way to the uh, lowest energy orbital which is the subshell and that has got to be the shell number one and then the subshell is one s so the one there refer to the shell number one that is the lowest energy level from the first shell closest to the nucleus and then the s is just the subshell which you fill it in so construct equation to represent the first ionization energy this part of the question is basically about the definition but instead of giving you you know three marks definition they give you a one mark equation in fact the moment you ask about definitions you should really write the equations general equation like x gaseous atom giving you x plus gaseous cation with plus one charge and then you have lost one electron there so in terms of kilojoule per mole, how do you define first ionization energy? It's the energy required because you always need energy to remove one mole of electrons, one mole electron from one mole of gaseous atom to form one mole of gaseous ions. But you must have the plus one charge gaseous ion. All of these are as part of the two to three marks definition question, which you have seen before. Uh, at least in the past five year series or past year paper. In D part one, the radius of terylium ions decreases after each successive ionization. So this is not across a period or down a group, but this is called successive ionization, which means that it's the same number of protons because it's the same element, same atom, but then as you lose one electron, then you lose two electrons and so on and so forth. So what are the two factors that are responsible for the increase in first ionization? Uh, first six ionization energy of terylium. So if we look at the terylium configuration, we have krypton 4d10, 5s2, 
and 5p4 so i'm just going to copy paste that and then we can discuss that in terms of which one uh, you're going to remove first so the first the second the third the fourth ionization energy will remove from there from the four electrons in the p subshell 5p subshell and then the fifth and the six ionization energy will remove from there. They just ask for the first six ionization energy. But I just want to show you where is the seven one from. The seven one will be from the uh, further inner shell there. So that means we can see that from the five to the four, that will be the biggest jump. So this is a big jump. This is a sudden big jump. But then we also know that uh, when we go across the third period, when we go from P to S, so removing from P, remove from the P, which is the 5P, versus removing from the 5S is going to have a small jump because that is to do with the shielding effect. As you will have known from uh, magnesium to aluminium, there's a sudden big jump, not really a big jump, but a small jump in first IE because of removing from the P subshell versus removing from the S subshell. Uh, that is not 4S, that should be 5S. Uh, my mistake there and then there will be the big jump going from the 6 to the 7 i.e. because you're going across uh, to the inner shell so what are the two factors so first of all there are lesser lesser number of electrons remaining lesser number of electrons in the outer shell but you know same number of protons same number of protons so having said that, you know, the net nuclear charge is the net nuclear attraction is becoming stronger. So there is a stronger net nuclear attraction to the outer shell electrons uh, that are remaining. And therefore, this increase in first six ionization energy is warranted. But in the first six ionization energy, we also have shielding effect. So, you know, uh, from 5P different different shielding different shielding effect from removing different sh shielding effect removing from 5p versus 5s where the 5p is more shielded and therefore it will be slightly easier which is why when it goes to the 5s there will be a, a small jump i wouldn't say there's a big jump this is a small jump rather than a big jump that and when we are asked to, to, you know, sketch the trend in the first six ionization energy, we can imagine this. What's wrong with that? Huh? Uh, let me see my highlighter. Oops, my highlighter is a bit too small in size. That is not a good color again. Uh, the trend in the first seven ionization energies, we can see where this question is leading really. So from, from, from the zero electron, which will start from zero, I guess. And then from the fifth, there will be a, a small jump. So there is a small jump from the fourth to the fifth because from the fourth to the fifth, there is a small jump. And then this should actually continue all the way to, oops, what I mean is there's a small jump going to, going to six electrons. And then the seven ionization energy will be a sudden big jump. So this is between the six and the seven. So this is the sudden big jump as you move to remove the electrons from the inner shell. But then there is a small jump. This is a small jump as you move across subshells. They are still within the same uh, principal quantum number from 5P to 5S. So from 5P to 5S, they're just a different shielding effect there. In part E, so pterylium reacts with F2 to form TeFx. We don't know what is X, but we know that octahedral, octahedral bond angle 90 degree. In the AS syllabus, there is something called valence shell electron pair repulsion. I'm pretty sure in the syllabus, they use this word called use, V-S-E-P-R, use, V-S-E-P-R, to explain. So they didn't say use V-S-E-P-R here, but they're asking you to explain that. So really you need to use VSEPR. So if you are octahedral, octahedral would mean that you have six bond pair and zero lone pair. So there must be six, 
six bonding pair this referring to the sigma bond six sigma terillium fluorine single bond because fluorine with seven electron in the outer shell they just want to share one electron to complete the outer shell as part of year nine dot and cross uh, covalent bonding case study there uh, six sigma terillium fluorine and also zero lone pair remaining on the on the terillium atom because you know you have six outer shell electrons as you are group 16 element according to the beginning of the question it was informed earlier and also from the project table which are given to you but that is just stating the bond pair and lone pair the epr there stand for electron pair repulsion theory where we have lone pair lone pair repel more than lone pair bond pair repel more than bond pair bond pair but since we have zero lone pair, we don't need to talk about any of these lone pair. We just need to talk about the bond pair, bond pair. So therefore, the six bond pairs repel equally in the absence of any lone pair. And therefore, you get this shape, which is called octahedral with the bond angle 90 degree there. In part F, TeFx reacts with water. So that means you are breaking the terillium fluorine sigma bond there and there is no more of that as you break this bond these are definitely what you call hydrolysis name the type of reaction there so uh, some people will have thought of it being a substitution it's not really a substitution because you're not really replacing it with just something else and because this is a very specific substitution even in organic chemistry uh, when you substitute a uh, halogeno alkane a carbon X to become a carbon OH, you also call this type of reaction as hydrolysis in organic chemistry as part of your SN1 and also SN2 reaction there. And we also know about the periodic table chemistry. This is your period three. Chloride hydrolysis, hydrolysis of your chloride. So it's not the first time we have seen it in the syllabus. Uh, it's in fact very, very popular in the syllabus. So TeFx plus water, we don't know what X is, then we get terillium hydroxide, but we are told that oxidation number of terillium does not change during this reaction. So if you have X number of X number of fluorine, the most electronegative element in the whole of periodic table, so definitely fluorine will have a minus one oxidation number, and therefore this must be terillium plus X. If you have terillium plus X and OH minus one, so that means that you know the exchange of the valency minus one and X, they're gonna exchange each other such that you have one terillium and then X of the OH minus, and then you will get HF. So for every for every F that you take out, you're gonna combine with H plus as the OH minus goes onto the terillium. And then you will have how many F to balance the equation. As usual, we have to write balanced chemical equations no matter what. But we also know that they told us that it was octahedral. So if you want really, you could have written the one where you have TeF6 because it was octahedral with six bond pair and zero lone pair plus H2O. I think I need to balance the equation above first because my OH was not balanced, the number of OH minus will be X of them, and the number of H plus will be X of them, and then the number of F minus will be X of them. Now this equation is totally balanced. Now if I use TeF6, then what am I forming? I'm forming TeOH6 because there's still terillium plus 6 as we are told. Specifically, no change in the oxidation number of the terillium in the question. And then I will get, um, perhaps I can write this further down here uh, so that we are not uh, encroaching on spaces. So that is that. And then we can see that our byproduct then will be your HF and we'll have six HF in order to uh, balance the equation there. So this is also fine because we were told specifically that it was octahedral, uh, therefore there's TeF6. If you want to choose to use the algebra method, which is just using TeFx, then you have to balance the equation with X because balancing equation is implied even from all level and IGCSE standard of questions. You do not write equations, they are not balanced. That's it really for this 13 marks overall first question.